Welcome to episode 101 of the Random Thoughts podcast. Um, we're having a very special guest in to, uh, to celebrate our uh, hitting that 100 mark and going, going beyond, uh, Josh Plant. Uh, Josh is uh, the head coach at Great North Coaching yep. uh, and the director of coaching or coaching coordinator. Uh, what's it, what's the, the official a- title? Athletic Development Manager. Athletic Development Manager um, at the Nunley Athletics. Um, and we were chatting, just doing some planning the other week um, around our partnership with the club. And we got talking about your concussion history and your story. Um, too interesting not to record. <laughs> it was, it's, fasc- it's a fascinating, it's an awesome story. And I think it'd be great to chat about it. Um, and I think the context is that we're still, we're learning so much more about concussion and yet we're still having so many people um, be a bit cavalier about it. And I think your story is probably um, a good way, a good antidote to that cavalier uh, attitude. Yeah. 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 Um, it's pretty full on. Um, so take us back. So you, uh, let's go right back. You're a high school athlete. Um, so tell, tell us all about it. Yeah. So um, I fell in love with football really early on. Um, I watched Rudy and still one of my favorite films of all time. And uh, I had, Notre Dame was a pretty aspirational school, but I was always a Joe Paternal fan and wanted to go to Penn State. Mm -hmm. So the first sort of chance I could get to go to a summer camp for football or gridiron, I I took the chance. And I was a 13-year-old kid. At the time, they didn't have any junior leagues. So I showed up, had no equipment, (laughs) no nothing. And uh, I'm on the field with some university players. Were you a big 13-year-old? 6'1", 80... Well, what does that convert to? Probably around uh, 75, 80 kilos. I haven't grown much yeah, so since you, for height. <laughs> yeah, so you, it wasn't like... No. Yeah, you were no. physically pretty ready to go. Yeah, like at 14, I looked I looked at some of the statistics and stuff, and I was running probably like a 5.32 shuttle, yeah. a 4.840. Yeah. Um, you know, and, it was, and it had had a pretty big background in baseball, soccer, lacrosse, and was just a multi-athlete. Mm. Um, so from there... Did my first camp, hadn't even played a football game in high school yet, and uh, wow. went on to four years of high school football. Um, in the summer, um, I played under... And, and what position did you play? Strong safety and outside linebacker. Tell us, uh, for those that don't know what those roles are, yep. uh, what, what do they entail? So basically, you cover the running backs coming out that get the handoffs um, from mm-hmm. the quarterback, as well as you cover some of the big wide receivers that are that are on the edges um, so not the really quick ones that are on the... And when you say cover, protect or attack? Um, defend. Defend. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I think with both of them, you know, it was such an interesting position because you took on the, you know, the 100 and 115 kilo pit bulls that were coming out of the backfield. Yeah. And then you had to cover the guys that were running four, four, five, forties 40s um, off the edges. Wow. Um, so you had to really read the game so you and get some people coming with some velocity. Oh yeah. Yeah. And one of the big, one of the things with Canadian football is that you can have a running start. It's not a stationary start like the U S right. So we played mixed rules. We played NCAA rules in high school, but we did play some Canadian rules. So I had, um, wide receivers coming at me at full tilt really? while I'm backpedaling and then engaging in the tackle. Whereas in, in America, you have to have to have a stationary start. Yeah. Wow. So um, you'll probably see the quarterbacks in the NFL, you know, make sure that everybody's set. You can yeah. only have one guy in motion. The play has to, everybody has to stop and then they can finally happen. Yeah. Whereas in Canadian ball, you can have guys 10, 15 yards back. Just getting a run up. Full running Literally start. taking a run up at you. Exactly. So <laughs> it's a lot of initial contact and yeah. then a lot of movement off of that. So, yeah. um, yeah. So my journey took me against, you know, guys that were, um, under 18 in summer ball, um, yeah. because I was starting to get noticed. And that was a, a, sort of a struggle. You yep. play ahead of your time. There was no junior. And for me to get noticed, I had to play against big guys. Yeah. So yeah. my head really didn't have time to sort of adjust. It mm-hmm. was going, take the hit, try to make the starting roster, um, try to make the weekend roster every single week, no matter what team I played for. And it all cost. Mm-hmm. So like I remember playing through some of the stuff I probably didn't go to a doctor for, mm-hmm. um, but like torn quad muscles and, you know, torn packs and, you know, really bruised up bodies from the weekend just and play through. It, just play through. Mm. And I think that was sort of the, the struggle with the concussions when they finally started to happen is 
you know, I was so afraid of losing my starting spot mm. and so afraid of easing, losing my dream, which was to be a division one um, college football player. Yep. And as a Canadian kid <laughs> coming from a very small town um, in Canada, it, it's, it's sort of a one in a hundred million chance that you're going to yeah. get a div one yeah. ride or that you're going to go to the States. Yep. So an interesting sort of segue to it is after my grade nine and 10 year, I had a VHS tape and uh, I went to the tech teacher at the school and said, I need to make a highlight reel to send to the US because yep. I'd heard this is how you do it, how you get noticed. So I took my entire game film from my grade nine and 10 and on an old Mac computer, um, on an old iMovie, hmm. basically edited out basically my special team stuff, my defensive stuff, put together a, I think it was in total about 10 minute highlight yep. reel. Um, and sent that to about 50 schools in my first year. So I was 15 years old doing this. Wow. So perseverance was a huge one for me. Yeah, yeah. And um, I knew I was doing something really good when all of a sudden Christmas time came. Um, we play sort of from September till October. Mm -hmm. So I would have done the videos in October, sent them out late October, early November. And Christmas time, I get a Christmas card from Boston College. Wow. And I got some letters back from Penn State, Michigan State, Michigan. And it was just, hey, thanks a lot for the videos. Um, and we'll be in touch or we'll mm. keep an eye on you. Mm. And at the time, you're one of, you know, mm. 100 million kids probably sending videos in the States or you don't really know at the time. To get a response is a good sign. Oh, it was huge. Yeah. Yeah. Like I remember getting that Christmas card and going, this is the best Christmas card I've ever <laughs> yeah. gotten. Yeah. And to see the, you know, the eagle on the front of it from Boston College with the football team yeah. is a card. I was astounded. I was like, man, I just got to keep going. And yeah. I just have to keep aspiring. So you and had that carrot. You knew if you just kept going. Yeah. It was it was there. Oh, big time. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. where, as my career went on, um, no matter what happened, I was I had to be at the camps. I had to be at the games. I had to keep playing and I had to keep training. Mm. You know, and um, it's when I talk to some of my athletes now, I say, okay, hey guys, like when you want something, you really got to want it. Mm. And it, it's got to be a, a massive part of your life you know like i probably turned down i don't know how many things to do with friends i turned down you have to say no to a lot of things to say yes to that one thing don't big you? time yeah. big time and then you know the concussions built up and so, the cleats got hung up yeah. so that so, was sort of where it went so tell me uh so the first concussion yep what, what happened there um well interesting enough i don't remember it right <laughs> um so I think the best way to tell that side of the story is in 2004, I'd had two back-to-back -back concussions yep. in about a two and a half week period. One was as a goalkeeper playing soccer. I had a um, a person come running in, going to make the goal. I'm a pretty <laughs> pretty aggressive person. So <laughs> I came to make the save. I, I laid out and the person followed through and I got kneed in the forehead. Wow. And made no. the save. And made the, made the save. I saw stars like real intense stars um i was sort of out of it kind of just spinning around and and at the time a lot of the guys were just like what's up what's going mm -hmm. on and and me being as stubborn mm -hmm. as i am yep. i just kept playing and and i didn't drop i didn't do anything wow. and um about a week later i had some symptoms you know tightness in the neck i had some lethargy you know lethargy and something wasn't right mm -hmm. and i went wakeboarding okay <laughs> and I, uh, we hit this beautiful glass lake, hit a wake and uh, nose dive the board and basically just face blinded. So I was like, okay, still definitely don't feel right. Yep. You know, bleedy nose, all that fun stuff. And do you think you were, you were less caught? Do you think that the wakeboarding accident was because your coordination reaction time, all that stuff? Big time. Yeah. Big time. And so it wasn't it, a coincidence. Nah, no, no. And I think it honestly was one of those things where, you know, I went to the hospital that, you know, probably was a day it was a day later after that because i'm mm. being stubborn didn't want to go and i like, yeah. can't stay in hospitals and um they were like you've got a you've got a pretty bad concussion mm. you know we're we're going to do some tests we're going to do an mri we're going to make sure there's no bleeding on the brain yeah. and and sort of send you anyway and i was in the u.s at the time being a canadian the health bills are not the, the yeah. cheapest so i got as much done as i could there and then flew back to canada a couple weeks later and um Still felt weird, but was like, nah, I'm all good. This oh, is just sort of normal. When when you say weird, what what weird symptoms? Just oh, uh, symptoms or? were, you know, sort of speech impediments, um, sensitivity to light, hearing, 
Um, so any loud noises, um, sensitivity to large crowds. Really? Um, yeah, it's a big one. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think just the claustrophobic nature of it, of, of feeling other things around Everything's you. Everything's kind of coming at you. All big yeah. time. And, and I think a lot of that is, is sort of what, you know, pilots go through, right? Or mm. like race car drivers, mm. where if they've had an accident, you know, they don't want to get back on the track mm. because they hear the noises. And mm. so I think for me, it was my brain was in fight or flight mode because I was basically just like football players must be coming at me or yeah. well, some stress yeah. is going to be pretty high. Mm. So I did a, a half marathon about six weeks later, which probably shouldn't have done and uh, woke up the next morning and my life changed. So that's when I woke up, I was in a dark room and somebody called me on my phone and I had no idea who it was. And it was a struggle to sort of, understand what they were trying to say to me and wow. halfway through the conversation it was my mother oh wow. <laughs> and she's like what's up what's going on and, and I was like I don't know like who are you and and I'm not too sure what's going on and um I just don't feel well so I hung up the phone and sort of tried to regain my thoughts went back to bed because I was mm. my body just needed a massive recharge and um I ended up, you know, taking time off of school and just sort of tried to deal with stuff on my own, which mm. wasn't a good thing. Um, mm. But that's what I felt so I needed to do. how old were you at that point? I would have been 19. Okay. Yeah. And um, so I went to a doc and the doc was like, all right, how are you feeling? Where are you at? All the, all the fun mm. stuff. Um, did a scat test, um, which is basically just like a question and answer. If you guys have never done scat, it's just a question and answer of, you know, here's a couple of colors, here's a couple of things, remind yourself, I'm going to go through sort of where your symptoms are and then you got to redo it. And I failed it huge. Yeah. So um, she said, all right, let's document every single time you've had a concussion. That was the first time I'd ever had anybody do it. Mm. So I'm sitting in this room, I'm exhausted mm. and didn't feel myself. We recorded 10 majors that had some sort of major symptoms of, you know, completely stars, completely blacked or browned out as they call it. So... I don't remember it and I reacted um, two major times where I remember the impact and I remember being very sort of enraged and aggressive and had to be sort of restrained as a football player back into the next play to make the contact. And then I don't remember weeks on end. Wow. Um, so we wrote down all this and kind of went, whoa, there's that's, 10 that's majors. Strange. And how were those majors? Uh, obviously, it, they all happen slightly differently, but what was the the standard way that that would happen on the football field for you? Or oh, it, it, was there a standard or was it just all different oh, things? I think when I look back now, probably one of them was me trying to be the hammer and not the nail. Because that's what they teach you, isn't it? Yeah. Like you use your head as uh, like a battering ram. Yeah, you're the wrecking ball. Like I think they, they, they teach you how to keep you, you know, your head across the body and impact the shoulder. But at such high speeds and against big guys, I'm guaranteeing you that 9 out of 10 hits are not yeah you know the a grade of a hit mm. you know they're very much like your head gets across the body and the impact is your head on their hips which is the strongest part of a person's body yeah and Do you know um, a basketballer i know um broke his forearm on somebody's hip playing oh, basketball? i wouldn't doubt it <laughs> would not <laughs> doubt a it strong part of the body it is yeah. it is insane and and i think the mentality of me being you know i, I remember vividly a, a coach yelling at me from the sidelines going you were not the hammer on that play you wow. need to hit harder. Yeah. And I'm going, okay, well, I'm going to hit harder. Yeah. So well. I went and hit harder. And, and I think now that I look back at it and, you know, the studies are out and, you know, I've talked to quite a few profe medical professionals is that it's not just the person you're making the contact that's susceptible to concussion. It's yourself as the, as the mm. tackler, because you're putting yourself that's into a position bad. that's got double or triple the force yeah. with somebody coming at you, yeah. you know, and, and you're the one trying to engage as much power as you got. Mm. And then they're trying to give you as much power as you've got. So, you know, those glory hits and those big, big hits that you're trying to put on come, come at a major cost. Yeah. Cause your brain doesn't know your brain inside your skull doesn't know the difference between you hitting an object and it decelerating <sighs> or an object hitting you. And it like, it's just it's movement relative to to the skull really big yeah. time mm. big time and i think you know it just became a part of the game yeah and and for me that's why it was so hard for me to sort of talk to a doctor and say what was different mm. so what were concussions like mm. I, you know I, I interviewed my mom a couple of weeks ago and i hadn't talked to her about my concussion history in a long time and um i said to her like was i different 
like, did you notice anything? Was there telltale signs? And she said, you know, like you'd get so tired and so aggressive because your body was in such a high stress mode at all times. You know, you'd be training, you'd be playing, you'd have a game on the weekend, something would be probably a concussion. We don't know. And all of a sudden for that whole week, you'd be a different person. Wow. And as a parent, it was a struggle because she's like, well, oh, I can't imagine that. what's going on? Yeah. You know, you're, you're, you're normally this, mm. you know, anybody that knows me, I'm, I've got a deep voice. I'm, you know, I'm very assertive. I'm, I'm a big presence, you know, and then just imagine that that's just not the way it is, mm. you know, like I either go into some sort of, you know, cold and depressed state where I just don't want to talk to anybody, which is mm. weird. And mm. people can normally say, oh, well, Josh is pretty talkative. Mm. And my mom would go, well, why are you going to bed at seven o'clock at night? Yeah. And why are you waking up at seven o'clock the next morning? You know, and, and why is this happening more regularly? And I asked her, like, what did you know about concussions at the time? And she said, oh, you got your head hit. <laughs> you went to the docs. Docs would say, you know, make sure somebody keeps you up for 48 hours. Yeah. And once the symptoms decide to go play. Mm. And, well, there was no sort of, you know, scat testings weren't a big one for high school players. And I was no. playing athletic therapists on the field or on the sidelines didn't even really exist. Yeah. Your trainers were maybe a, an assistant coach. Mm. Um, so there was no sort of defense no, or oversight. You no, know, no. And I think that's, you know, oh, oh, there's one statistic that I, I wanted to pull up. Mm. So um, a recent survey showed that 32% of high school football players had sustained concussion like symptoms over two years previous but failed to seek any treatment out of fear that they would be excluded from play. While their fear was justifi is justified, concussion protocols have been put in place to protect athletes who have sustained head injuries. It's imperative that they understand that being removed from play can save them from permanent brain damage, and it can even save their life. And 32%. That's crazy. You know, and, and I look back and go, how many guys that I play with probably had a concussion yeah. and are probably sitting in a boat right now similar to me yeah. And going, well, I've got all these, I'm not the same person I was. Mm -hmm. And I know we all change. Don't yeah. get me wrong. Yeah. But, you know, I went through sort of a 10 year period of, of trying to figure out who I was. So, if you don't mind, take us yeah. back. So you're speaking to your mom. You're not really understanding her. Yeah. Um, you've, you're then seeking help. Yeah. And you, you, you dropped out from school or you cut back or? I tried to still do school. I tried to still do school. I, 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 How I, did I, that go? <laughs> um, I finally had a professor after about... Uh, I think no sorry I took one semester off yeah. which I still stayed in the in the city I was and yeah. which was you know five six hours away from was my that? family Ottawa. Ottawa and um for that time I just basically was a ghost mm -hmm. and you know I stayed indoors I would go for short walks um I was telling my partner the story of I'd walk out the house and if it was dark I'd be okay no street lights, no nothing. Go for a short walk, come back in because yeah. I knew nothing was going to bother me sensitivity wise. Um, and then you know, try like struggled with watching TV and stuff like that. So mm. I basically just slept. That's all I did. Oh, uh, probably three or four months. Wow. You know, and and people tried. <laughs> people really yeah. reached out to try to get a hold of me and help me mm. out, and and I just didn't want anything to do with it because I was such in a in a phase of my life that needed pure recovery. Yeah. You know, I, the brain just needed months of rest. Cool. Oh, and, and that was substantial. Mm. You know, I lost a lot of friends. Mm. I lost a lot of people because I didn't know how to relate to them mm. and say, Hey guys, like it's what I need. Cause the time where you most need to be able to be able to explain that you kind of, you're too busy no. dealing with your own stuff. Yeah. It, and I, and I got sick of telling the same story. Mm. I really got sick of it. I got sick of saying to guys like, Hey, you know what? I, I just feel weird. Because the problem is that, you know, if you if you rock up and you have uh, a broken leg, no one says, hey, Josh, let's go, uh, let's go play Frisbee. Like, it's quite clear that you can't do that thing. Correct. Whereas if you have a brain injury, if you have a concussion, it's, you look the same. And so there's, it's hard for people to recognize that you mightn't be able to engage in the same social things. It's just different. Yeah. And that's, that's the thing that probably hurt me the most. Mm.